All right, everybody, happy Tuesday. At least I'm very happy today because we've been trending all day on X, giving the interview that I gave with uh, Rabbi Barclay yesterday. A lot of you guys have so many comments regarding that back and forth. And one of the questions that I have is, why do so many people think I'm going to get killed? (laughs) Yeah, it's a recurring theme. People are like, be careful, Candace, double up on your security. Don't do this, don't do that. They're going to kill you. You're going to get Michael jackson Where is all of that rhetoric coming from? Today, I want to unpack it, and I want to formally state my history when it comes to my engagement with the political movement in America, reveal to you guys some things that I've never revealed before, really want to crack open this dialogue. All that and more today coming up on Candace Owens. All right, guys, a tremendous, tremendous response. Honestly, thank you. I think people of all races and religions were just shocked by the conversation that I had with Rabbi Barkley yesterday. It wasn't really much of a conversation. Obviously, he spoke a lot more than I did, but I was happy for that. I was grateful for that because I wanted people to hear his perspectives. I know this is going to sound weird, but I kind of like Rabbi Barclay because I think he's honest. I think he honestly, as I tweeted yesterday, views himself as better and more important, or at least his race as as more important than other races, more significant, the history of his race as more significant. And even in terms of someone being a supremacist, if you are honestly a supremacist, at least I can appreciate that because you're not hiding who you are. And that's why I meant it when I said that he will always be welcomed back onto this show. I think it, it takes courage to have conversations. And I think that what he did yesterday was actually quite courageous couple of moments that you guys were shocked by, just like me, was, I guess, just the lack of definition when it comes to anti-Semitism. It mutates. He told us that over and over again. It is a definition. It is a hate that mutates, which essentially, at least the way I took it, and I think most of you took it, means that it can just be whatever they say that it is, including the term hag. I think I actually learned the word hag from watching the movie Hocus Pocus when I was a kid. It actually was one of my favorite movies, and they used the word hag, and I used it to describe someone that is engaging in witch-like behavior, trying to cast a spell on audiences to convince them that Candace Owens is an anti-Semite when I could not be further from that sort of a categorization. I, I am just, I have no hatred towards Jewish people in my soul. I just don't. I had many experiences with Jewish people growing up. I've already recounted those. We're not going to do that today. But yes, Rabbi Barclay says that the scholars agree. He kept talking down to me. It's, it's the scholars. It's the intelligentsia. They're so much smarter than us, and they understand the definition just changes. I think a lot of you guys were also surprised by the double down, right, in the face of overwhelming evidence. I just thought there was no way. Once we pulled the clips of me saying the exact opposite of what he claimed that I said, I thought there was no way that he was going to double down on it, but he did. He particularly doubled down on the Hitler is okay, Candace thing, right? Candace said Hitler is okay. He repeated that over and over again in that hit piece. And then I show that I did not in any way say Hitler was okay, because what crazy person would ever jump on a stage and say that? Here's one comment from YouTube. Somebody wrote, when she played her Hitler quote and he still stood by what he wrote, I lost respect for this guy. Yeah, a lot of comments looked like that, and I think especially because so many people had never actually heard what I said in its entirety. You've seen the libels, you've seen the smears, they've been printed for years. I am still having to clarify. For years, I have been clarifying what I said, and many of you guys had never heard it because you've just seen article after article, hit after hit, people trying to convince the masses that I said something that I simply never said. And in watching that clip, I think people were shocked. But yes, this is the truth. And factually speaking, uh, as a political pundit, whatever it is that you want to call me, as a podcaster, I have been smeared and libeled for years. And I feel uh, a power building in that people are getting tired of this. We are being tired of being propagandized. And that is why, for me, I feel in my soul at the time is now. And people are asking, why, why is Candace speaking out right now? Well, the truth is, is I'm simply tired of being lied on. I'm a human, right? Eventually you get to a point where you say, I'm just not going to allow people to lie on my name anymore. Especially again, as I said, when it's been happening for years. And really all I've ever done since I've had a platform is just tried to show you guys the truth. 
I don't want to tell you what to think. I can only share with you what my experiences are and hope that it helps you develop your own ideas. So let's recap, because I'm going to share some things I've never shared before. Obviously, you guys know that I hit the scene in 2017, and I had a laser sharp focus on the black community. My career began when I started making YouTube videos, really challenging the BLM narrative. I was having my own awakening in real time about the lies that the media was printing about black people, really lies that were meant, in my my viewpoint, to keep black people down, to encourage black people uh, to live a life of criminality, to encourage black people to loot and to riot their own neighborhoods in the name of some perceived social justice. I pretty immediately got hired at Turning Point USA, and I hit the ground running with Charlie Kirk. Charlie Kirk is unapologetically pro-Israel. Everybody knows this. I was beside him uh, throughout most of his pro-Israel commentary, and I bet if people dug it up on the internet, you would hear me saying pro-Israel talking points. And I say talking points because when I got into it, I didn't really care, again, about Israel because I was an American, and I just wanted to talk about black America. But certainly, I was nodding my head no matter what Charlie Kirk said, because I was just grateful to have a platform to talk about the things that were important to me. And I had a wonderful experience with Charlie Kirk, and I learned a lot under him and with Turning Point USA. In 2018, Charlie Kirk and I traveled to the United Kingdom, and it is there that I gave a notorious speech in November of 2018, where that clip was derived from. I'm going to show you that clip again in its context. We were talking about things that were happening in the United States, and somebody raised their hand and asked about the word nationalism, why we're all so afraid to say, I'm a nationalist. I I, I am focused on my own nation. And in trying to answer their question, I basically said, because the word nationalism has been wrongly attributed to Adolf Hitler, at least in America, and that's why people are afraid to embrace the word. Here are my words again. Yeah, I agree. I I actually don't have any problems at all with the word nationalism. I think that it gets, uh, the definition gets poisoned um, by uh, elitists that actually want globalism. Globalism is what I, what I don't want. So when you think about whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about in, at least in America is Hitler. You know, he was a national socialist, but if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. The problem is, is that he wanted, he had dreams outside of Germany. He wanted to globalize. He wanted everybody to be German, everybody to be speaking German, everybody to look a different way. That's not, to me, that's not nationalism. Um, So in thinking about how we could go bad down the line, I don't really... I don't really have an issue with nationalism. I really don't. I think that it's okay. It's important to retain your, your country's identity and to make sure um, that what's happening here, which I think is incredibly worrisome in terms of the just the, the decrease in the birth rate that we're seeing um, in the UK, is what you kind of want to avoid. So I'm not, I don't have anything problem. I have no problems with nationalism. It's globalism that I try to avoid. There you have it. I have no issues with nationalism. There's no person that can watch that clip and somehow believe that I was saying it's totally okay to Holocaust the Jews. I didn't even mention the word Holocaust. I didn't mention the word Jews. Truly was answering a question about whether or not we should embrace the word nationalism, but that didn't matter. Now, again, I want to be clear that that clip that you're watching, that was recorded in 2018 at a live event in the UK. And there were journalists at that event. I was interviewed by journalists at that event. About 200 people were in attendance amongst them. Many Jewish people were in attendance. Nobody cared. Nobody thought it was problematic what I said on stage. Fast forward to 2019, and out of nowhere, a journalist uh, writing for Media Matters decided to make that clip go viral online. The journalist's name who made that clip go viral on Twitter was Jonathan Whitehouse. Again, he writes for Media Matters, and suddenly I woke up (laughs) months after having given a speech to every person calling for me to be canceled because I supported Adolf Hitler. That's not a joke. I'm showing you some headlines. This is Media Matters. Turning Point USA's Candace Owens, quote, if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. I have no problem with nationalism wow, that's kind of making it seem very different from what I was actually saying. Behind them, BuzzFeed News, Candace Owens, if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. Again, no context given to that quotation, so you can imagine the firestorm that was caused. And Mediaite, Candace Owens, Hitler's nationalism was actually fine. (laughs) It was his globalism that was a problem. You can already see what they were trying to do. 
And again, the firestorm that I endured, I will tell you something personal. I was so stressed out by that event that I stressed myself into an audio autoimmune response. Like my body was breaking down because I didn't understand what was happening. I'd never in my entire life been accused of anti-Semitism. And suddenly I was fighting for my career. I was temporarily block, blacklisted from Fox News for having said this sentence, which suddenly again was pulled out of obscurity. And I quite literally was facing a threat that everything was going to be over because how dare I say that? I have absolutely no right to say that. And then you had Jewish organizations that issued very strong statements against them, among them the Simon Wiesenthal Center. Here is a tweet from them when this was going viral back in February 18th, sorry, back on February 8th, 2019, they wrote, Scope and depth of Candace Owens' lack of knowledge of basic history is appalling and frightening. Hitler's program to make Germany great was based on race and anti-Semitism. Also, of course, the ADL instantly jumped on this. They tweeted, they retweeted first and foremost John Whitehouse, so they helped to make this video go viral. And then they wrote this in response, Candace Owens bizarrely claims Hitler went wrong only when he meddled in other countries. Hitler's murderous crimes against Jews and others were horrific, regardless of whether they occurred across Europe or in Germany alone. Hitler wasn't a globalist, but a genocidal dictator. So you, would, you see what they're doing here. They're just engaging in the libel and the slander. They're trying to color people's opinions before they've actually heard or understood the context of what I was saying. And let me tell you guys something. It worked. It actually worked. That is the power of the media. I felt like it was a hit job. Like someone just said, we've got to get her, pour through every second of footage of Candace Owens speaking. We're going to pull something out of context and this girl is going to be gone because what else could this be? Of course, if I was on stage saying I love Hitler, it would have gotten viral back in November. The Jewish people that attended my speech would have been outraged immediately. Why was this suddenly popping up in February of 2019? I'll never have an answer on that, but something that I never shared and I want to share today was what happened thereafter. A friend of mine who I am not going to name encouraged me to visit the Simon Wiesenthal Center. That's a human rights organization, human rights for Jews organization. And there was this very strange meeting that occurred. Now I wanna be clear that I didn't understand the meeting because the individuals were speaking in Hebrew. My understanding going into it was that once I spoke to this individual, things would be clarified and then I could just go on living and my reputation would pretty much be restored. And by golly, that's kind of what happened. So again, it was an extremely old man. I, th I think he runs the place, I don't know. I can't remember his name, so I'm not gonna make one up. But I had to sit in a meeting and explain that I didn't think Hitler was a great person, listen to two people speak Hebrew, and then my reputation was restored, or at least I was allowed to go on pursuing what I wanted to pursue, which was just talking about black Americans and the fracturing of the black and white relationship. It's a very odd thing when I reflect on that. But I wanna be clear that the threat, the threat that Candace, this could be over at any moment for you, don't you get out of line again by you know, saying something that you never actually said, but don't make us have to threaten you again. That I still always felt over me because it was just a very scary thing to go through. We spend way too much time on our phones, which is bad enough as it is. Perhaps even worse is that your phone carrier can track everything you're doing on your phone, which is a gross invasion of privacy. Many companies have even admitted to it. They say it's so they can quote unquote, better understand your interests. But really what they want is to sell your activity to advertisers, stuff like the sites you visited and what you've been up to online. The more they can get on you, the larger their paycheck, which is why I use ExpressVPN. It takes a tap of a button and your network data is encrypted and rerouted through ExpressVPN's secure servers for ultimate privacy. ExpressVPN shields your web browsing and protects all of your network data so you can stay private even when you're using your favorite apps. Whether you're an iPhone, Android, or tablet user, ExpressVPN works on all of your devices. The best part is that one subscription can be used on up to five devices at the same time. Visit expressvpn.com slash Candice to get the same VPN that I use. Use my link to get three extra months free at expressvpn.com slash Candice. But let's fast forward now to 2022, to a situation that the entire world was made aware of, obviously, when Ye, the artist formerly known as Kanye West, tweeted this. 
He tweeted, I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going death con three on Jewish people. The funny thing is I actually can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew. Also, you guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who ever opposes your agenda. It's good to look at his tweet now uh, without it being interpreted in the media, especially at last minute. You guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who ever opposes your agenda. Now, at that time, obviously, the reason why people were looking for me to make a statement is that this tweet came very close to the time that I had taken the notorious picture with Kanye West. We both wore White Lives Matter t-shirts at his fashion show in Paris. Again, me teaming up with Kanye because I have a laser focus on the black community and I had a laser focus on wanting to destroy Black Lives Matter as an organization because I knew that they were lying to the black community. So again, my entire relationship and what I did publicly with Kanye was based on black America. But again, because this tweet came closely thereafter, people were looking at me to comment. And the truth is that I was aware behind the scenes, Kanye gave me conversations, I read them in their entirety, of very specific Jewish people who I would say were definitively making threats against him. And so I had more knowledge than the public had when he shared this tweet. Now, what happened thereafter was I tried to cautioned the public the very next day following his tweet. So he had done nothing else yet. He had done no interviews. It was just the tweet that had existed in the public sphere. And I was trying to essentially say to people, hold your horses, because I think that once he explains what's happening behind the scenes, you will, you will realize that he's not talking about all Jewish people in the entire world. He is feeling passionately about certain people that he works with. And here is what I said in an attempt to get people to hold their horses. Take a listen. That was the tweet. And people subsequently demanded that the tweet be taken down for anti-Semitism. Now, if you are an honest person, you did not think this tweet was anti-Semitic. You did not think that he wrote this tweet because he hates or wants to genocide Jewish people. This does not represent the beginning of the Holocaust. That's if you're an honest person, you'll meet that. You, you will admit that, right? If you're an honest person, when you read this tweet, you had no idea what the hell he was talking about. I had, I had no idea when I read this tweet what the hell he was talking about. This tweet inspired questions, not answers. First and foremost, what is death con three? Did he mean death con three, which would be a military defense position, not an offense for those of you that are offended, a military defense position? Is he tweeting this because he's reading the Newsweek headline, calling him an anti-Semitic? Is he angry because he can't believe that he's not free to talk about people in his life who happen to be Jewish, right, without being accused of anti-Semitism? Is he saying, I'm not going to shut up and I'm going to keep tweeting and I'm going to keep calling these people out, referring to his friends that he feels slighted by? Is he talking about Jared Kushner and Josh Kushner? If you're a liar, you'll say, I know I was scared, Candace. I actually thought that Kanye West was going to launch a military strike in Israel. Because that's the reaction. Like when I woke up and I looked at the headlines, the reaction was like Kanye West had gotten together a military strike and it was going to go forward in the morning time in Israel. That was, that was the reaction that was met with this tweet. So that's what I said. And now that we're looking at it and examining it, in the retrospect, you can see that I'm trying to suggest to people that there are specific people and he is having a reaction. But, and I will admit, if I fumbled the ball here and I can understand why people were upset about it, they read that as, no, she is, she's fully defending him and he actually does want to go death con three on all Jewish people everywhere. People were very upset that I had said that. But I want to be clear that I had actually read the messages that were being sent to him. One of them, he ended up sharing publicly. This was a text message from Harley Pasternak to Kanye. And this was something, again, that I had read before he had sent that tweet. Text message reads, I'm going to help you one of a couple of ways. First, you and I sit down and have a loving and open conversation, but you don't use cuss words. And everything that is discussed is based in fact and not some crazy stuff that dumb friend of yours told you or you saw in a tweet. Second option, I have you institutionalized again, where they medicate the crap out of you and you go back to zombie land forever. Playdate with the kids just won't be the same. Is that a normal tweet? I will ask you guys, a normal text message, pardon, 
or somebody in your life, and Harley Pasternak, yes, he is Jewish, to send to you. He's supposed to be a trainer. What do you mean I'll have you institutionalized again? What does that mean? I, that your play dates with the kid, you're threatening somebody's relationship with their kids, right? Now, when you do something like that, it can drive somebody crazy. And again, I will own it. If it read to people at that time that when I was saying that, I was defending his right to impose upon every single Jewish person in the world, I apologize. And I'm hoping that this clarifies for you what I knew, the information that I had, and my understanding that he was responding to threats that he was actually getting from specific people. And I was hopeful that he would talk about that in a larger capacity, but then quite surprised when even when he did share that tweet, there was a minimal uh, media response to it. It was sort of like, oh, well, Harley Pasternak is allowed to say that. And shame on you, Candace, for not recognizing it. But I want to be clear, that is the extent, what you just saw, of my commentary on that situation that led to a huge reaction, calls for me to resign, calls for me to get fired for defending Kanye West. I want to be honest here and tell you that I was also made to endure a very severe financial consequence behind the scenes because of those words that you heard right there. And one day I will talk more about that. You have my word. Let's fast forward instead to 2023. I'm scrolling through Twitter and a journalist, and again, this is just a few weeks after October 7th, and a journalist named Yashar Ali is, I think, being pretty measured in his responses. I think he's pro-Israel uh, based on how he tweets and what he tweets about. But on this day, he was focused on something that Brian Mast, a congressman, had said on the floor. Ishar Ali tweeted, this is absolutely sick stuff from Rep. Brian Mast. And if there's any decency left in Congress, a resolution will be passed to condemn his remarks and he'll be removed from the Foreign Affairs Committee. I'm not naive enough to think he'd resign. So I saw this tweet and then I clicked to see what Brian Mast said and I was equally as disgusted. Here is what Brian Mast said. As a whole, I would encourage the other side to not so lightly throw around the idea of innocent Palestinian civilians, as is frequently said. Uh, I don't think we would so lightly throw around the term innocent Nazi civilians during World War II. I hope that enrages you because what he's basically saying is there's no such thing as an innocent Palestinian life. And basically, I believe, was laying the groundwork for Genocide. That is a that's genocidal language to say about any group of people. If I say there's there's no such thing as an innocent Iraqi, it doesn't matter who you're talking about. That is genocidal language. And so I retweeted this and I said, yeah, this was disgusting, utterly dehumanizing. Of course, there are innocent civilians on either side of every conflict, and we should not forget that. This is shameful, inhumane rhetoric. I shortly followed up that retweet with a blanket statement. No government anywhere has a right to commit a genocide ever. There was no justification for a genocide. I can't believe this even needs to be said or is even considered the least bit controversial to state. Of course, what Brian Mass said was wrong. When I tweeted that second tweet, people thought that I was talking about Israel, or some people thought I was talking about Israel. They were so far in the trenches, they thought that I was making a statement that Israel is committing a genocide, when in reality I was saying that people like Brian Mass need to cool it with their language. I get something bad has happened, but you can't say stuff like this ever. And so what happened was people who were formerly friends of mine, like Dave Rubin, began reading into it, began doing shows, just pretending, straight up pretending that I made a statement about the Israeli government when in fact I hadn't. I just showed you the proof that I had not. I liked Yashar's tweet, I retweeted it. I was obviously speaking about Brian Mass, but it didn't matter. Because what I learned, and what I think a lot of people are learning, and especially on the heels of my discussion with Rabbi Barclay, is that even if what you said was something else, how some people feel should be prioritized. So even though I was talking about Brian Mast, and I was proven right in talking about Brian Mast, I was still at fault. I needed to understand that I was still wrong because of how other people felt, that the timing of my tweet wasn't right. It wasn't the right time to say that genocide is always wrong. There's a time and a place for that, and that was not it. Then it got even weirder because people started just spinning conspiracy theories. They started saying, that I was coordinating with Tucker Carlson to intentionally get fired from the Daily Wire. I'm not kidding. People were 
beginning to say, and Dave Rubin was among these people, that it was so obvious, so obvious, <laughs> gosh, why else would someone say genocide is always wrong, right? That I, I was trying to get hired by Tucker Carlson. There must have been some coordination between us. At 40 weeks pregnant, this was my big bad plan. This was psychopathic. None of this was true. There wasn't an ounce of truth to that statement whatsoever. In fact, I, I refer to this as Ayanon. It was like Israel Anon. It was a conspiracy theory born of absolutely nothing, but the onslaught continued. People attacking my character, saying horrific things about me, simply because I didn't like what Brian Mast has said. And of course, most notoriously, everybody remembers that a clip started circulating of Ben Shapiro here at the Daily Wire uh, making ad hominem attacks on me, which I chose not to respond to at that time. I didn't think it was appropriate. But that, of course, just fed more people that were attacking me. Grand Canyon University is a private Christian university in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. GCU believes that our Creator has endowed us with certain inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They believe in equal opportunities and that the American dream starts with purpose, and they equip you to serve others in ways that promote human flourishing, creating a ripple effect of transformation for generations to come. So whether you're pursuing a bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree, Grand Canyon University's online, on-campus, and hybrid learning environments are designed to help you achieve your goals. GCU has over 330 academic programs as of September 2023. GCU will meet you where you are and provide a path to help you fulfill your unique academic, personal, and professional ambitions. Find your purpose today at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. That's gcu.edu. So what is the actual point of that? The attacks have not stopped. You've seen this. You, you, you saw that in my conversation with the rabbi. He is now starting to share with everybody that I'm, I'm enraged. You have Rabbi Shmuley. She's deranged. She just hates you so much. Smear after smear after libel after libel after libel, and it will not stop. Two years of consistent threats and harassment from Rabbi Shmuley and his hag daughter, and they have not let up. They began, by the way, they jumped into the game on the basis of that clip that I just showed you. I'm not ashamed to show you guys what I said because nothing was anti-Semitic. I was just trying to tell people that more was happening behind the scenes. That's it. Did not make any claims or yelling or saying all Jewish people are this or that. And yet people are saying definitively that I am a Jew hater, I'm a Jew hating bigot. That's what Rabbi Barclay said. What is the point of this? I want you guys to actually ask yourself this. When people say they're going to Michael Jackson you, what are they actually referring to? Well, I have a suspicion that what they mean is that all of these attacks are meant to drive me crazy, right? To drive someone crazy, to make threats to their life, to smear their reputation, to libel them, to make them somebody who can't even be hired or work within a certain industry because they have been so forceful in their lies and in their smears. Basically, then to drive that person to a point of anger so that they might tweet something that's angry, that they might tweet something that appears to be irrational to the public so then they can turn around and they can say, told you so. I told you Candace was crazy. I told you she was deranged. I told you she wasn't anti-Semite. But what's really happening is that you have specific people that are in the Jewish community that won't stop attacking me. They won't stop attacking me. And I think most people, after years of enduring this, would, in fact, be driven crazy. People actually, just yesterday, after listening to the full hour, hour and a half discussion between Remy and Rabbi Barclay, I said, Kansas, I don't know how you do it. This would drive me crazy. Yeah. Add years of that. Years of that. Headline after headline, smear after smear, and ask what sort of person would still remain this calm. I want to be clear, what is happening is a form of psychological terrorism. What they're doing to me is a form of psychological terrorism. They want me to snap so that I can then prove their point. Actually, my options are two. Either we're going to keep smearing you until you snap, or you can simply comply. And what is the thing that they want me to comply with? I'm not sure. <laughs> I think I've been pretty rational and I've been pretty level-headed. I, I don't understand why they have been engaging in this sort of smearing. And this is why I'm terming this merchants of smear, because what they're doing here is they're constantly threatening people behind the scenes, publicly threatening people by smearing their reputations, and they never, ever, ever take a break. This business just keeps going on and on and on and on. And the point is, again, 
to make me submit. Another example of that, this is rather shocking, I'm not kidding. Yesterday, a journalist, and I'm putting this into quotation marks, despite all of the debunking that I did in that long article, in that long interview with Rabbi Barclay, already was jumping on the next smear. His name is Isaac Shore. He writes for, you guessed it, Mediate, as well as the New York Post. And he is now publicly calling to have me fired. He's written a lot of articles, by the way. And he talks to a lot of people behind the scenes, telling them not to run any pieces on Candace Owens. Don't talk about Candace Owens. This guy's like, you know, doing a real hit job here. And like a total rational journalist, he tweeted, how long will the Daily Wire stand by Candace Owens? No one is asking the Daily Wire to stop Owens from peddling hatred and conspiracy theories. They're just wondering why it's choosing to subsidize such behavior. Mm, yeah, totally a rational thing for a journalist to tweet. He accompanied that with an article by the same title, How Long Will the Daily Wire Stand by Candace Owens? Because uh, as you've seen, I've showed you the whole history. Hey, aren't you convinced yet? They've written so many articles psychological terrorists. They told you a thousand times, they didn't so it must be true. And why would anyone hire and stand by a raging anti-Semite? They've said it so many times, guys. And he wasn't done. He wrote a second headline yesterday published on Mediaite. Maybe, I don't know, just enraged at the fact that I had to sit down and spoke rationally to Rabbi Barclay. I don't, I don't know what's driving this, but here's the headline. Candace Owens endorses wild anti-Semitic conspiracy theory about Jews being drunk on Christian blood. That is the headline, you guys. You've been listening to the show. Have you ever heard me endorse a conspiracy theory about Jews being drunk on Christian blood? How sick and how sinister is this getting? How utterly insane this is all getting? It's starting to feel like there's some sort of a bounty on my head and the person that can convince the public of something that is so ridiculous that I can't come back from is just going to receive a ton of money. And Isaac Shore is really competing for that because do you wanna know where he, he got that conspiracy theory from? A tweet that I had liked of someone defending me when Rabbi Shmuley was smearing me. He dug up an old tweet of mine that was from February, tried to present it as if it was something new and something that was about him before our back and forth ever even broke out. And so I liked the tweet because it clarified the right date of the tweet, saying that, Rabbi Shmuley, this tweet is obviously from February 20th. What are you, drunk on Christian blood? Didn't even pay attention to the last part of the tweet. I just obviously liked that this person was calling out this BS smearing tactic. Little did I know, that Isaac Shore and a team of journalists are now monitoring every single like of mine on Twitter to see if they can convince the public that I am advocating for insanity. This is how desperate they have become. So I'll ask the question, what are we actually witnessing here? Do you believe Isaac Shore is a victim? Did you believe that he is a person who genuinely in his heart thinks that I think Jews are running around drinking Christian blood by that headline? Do you think that Rabbi Barclay is a victim? Do you honestly believe his interpretation that I was the one who owed the apology to him and the Jewish community on the basis that I just won't let them keep trying to smear me out of existence, specific people in the Jewish community? God forbid, she, did she defend herself against Rabbi Shmuley? Do you believe Rabbi Shmuley is a victim? When you listen to these individuals speak and the things that they are publicizing, does that register to you as true victimhood? Because what it registers to me as is power, real power hiding behind a veneer of victimhood, the kind of power that can take somebody out and end their entire career if that person says something that they don't like. And in this case, it's not that I'm saying things that they don't like, it's that I'm refusing to allow my voice to be controlled. I wanna be clear to you guys, I'm going to be honest with you because everybody's noticing it. Every single political commentator in America, every single one of them knows this, that if you do not step out and say things that are radically pro-Israel, or if you are too quiet on certain narratives and they want you to be radically pro-Israel, you can lose everything. That's truth. That is a fact. I'm not, I'm not feeling like I need to hide from that anymore because, or be afraid to say it rather is a better way to say it, because I've endured this for years. I'm just at the end of my rope. I have given so much rope here and I am just done with it. Every person that you are a fan of, they know this. Every person that you line up to go here speak, they know this. 
Again, it's not even on the basis of what you say. It can sometimes be on the basis of what you don't say. That an entire mob will assemble. They will write piece after piece after piece until you subjugate. If you don't subjugate, the bounty grows larger. So yes, there was a large bounty on my head for the crime of refusing to suddenly hate Muslims and to condone Muslims getting bombed following October 7th. Everybody can see that. I have said nothing controversial because genuinely I was sad when a bunch of innocent Israelis were murdered and killed in horrific acts. And genuinely, I am sad when a bunch of innocent Palestinians, and yes, they do exist, Brian Mast, are now being made to endure bombing and all sorts of other horrific things that we are all seeing on Twitter. That is my crime. Everybody can see that. It's it's ridiculous to pretend that it's anything else, okay? There's no language that I have used. There's nothing insane that I have said other than I would like to treat all races the same. I refuse to be a supremacist. I refuse to condone supremacy. That is my crime. So I want to do here for all of you guys that are worried that something's going to happen to me is to just provide this full accounting of everything that I've ever done and everything that I've ever said that has been deemed controversial from this mafia, right? This mafia of journalists that will not let up and leave me alone. Because that's what it is. What is it? What else could it possibly be? You're acting like a mafia. You are threatening me. You are taking my words out of uh, of context. You are telling people to fire me on the basis that I just won't be radical, on the basis that I won't hate on command. It's not about love. It's about hate. You want me to hate on command. And I want to be clear that what these journalists are engaging in is evil. It is absolute evil to do this to any person. And I'm not going to be driven crazy by it. In fact, I'm going to be driven to more clarity by it. I am going to go sh- grow stronger from this. I am going to be a person that is more encouraged to speak out on what is happening to me. I want the public to see what is happening to me because I think they know my heart and they know that what I'm actually doing is refusing hatred. Balance of Nature Fruits and Veggies is the most convenient way to get whole food ingredients daily. Balance of Nature uses an advanced cold vacuum process that encapsulates fruits and vegetables into whole food supplements without sacrificing their natural antioxidants. These capsules are void of additives, fillers, extracts, synthetics, pesticides, or added sugar. The only thing that's in Balance of Nature's fruits and veggie capsules are fruits and veggies. Imagine trying to eat 31 different fruits and vegetables every day. That's impossible. With Balance of Nature, getting your daily fruits and vegetables is easier than ever. Go to balanceofnature.com and use promo code CANDICE to get 35% off your first set of fruits and veggies and additional $10 off every additional set that you buy. That's balanceofnature.com, promo code CANDICE. I saw this video, by the way, further to that point of Anna Kasparian. Her and I have basically been on the opposite sides of everything throughout our entire career. She has said horrible things about me, but so what? thought this video was interesting, and I'm going to show you what she said regarding APAC. APAC is evil. APAC is evil, evil. My fellow Americans, are you okay with that? Are you okay with a lobbying group representing the best interests of a foreign government telling you you need to bust your ass every day, work a job that you likely hate, and have a portion of your earnings taken from you by our federal government and funneled to the Israeli government so they can commit atrocities in the Gaza Strip. Are you okay with that? Because I'm not okay with that. And nothing gets under my skin more, okay, than hearing these pieces of crap say things that make it clear that they're they feel entitled to our money. Entitled. Entitled. That That gets under my skin more than you guys understand, okay? That's an impassioned response, and what she's referring to there are some leaked documents from an APAC meeting. APAC, of course, alongside Big Pharma, is one of the biggest lobbying organizations in the United States. They lobby our congressmen, and I'm certain that that includes journalists, because if you have a budget like APAC, why wouldn't you be lobbying journalists as well uh, to essentially always fight to have pro-Israel narratives. And again, I wanna be clear, I am not anti-Israel. This is what is so wild about all of this. I'm just not anti-Palestinian. And so I hear what she is saying, and I believe that what is happening right now in this country politically is an evil. 
It is wrong. It is completely ridiculous to have a bunch of people that are fearful to speak and say rational things, rational things that they know to be true because they know they can lose everything. Because they know that a bunch of journalists will pop up like a game of whack-a-mole and try to spin things that you have said to make them much more nefarious than what you actually intended when you say them. Because they know that these journalists have power. Because they know that these journalists will not stop the onslaught. And eventually, people are going to cave. And I can't tell you guys how wrong this is. It is so wrong that every fiber of my being now wants to expose this. I want to invite each and every journalist that is going to continue to engage with me in this way onto my show. So Isaac Shore, take this as a public invite for you to come down to sit with me and to explain to everybody why you really believed that I think Jews drink Christian blood. You wrote that article because you really believed it. You're actually a good guy. I'm sure you are. I'm going to sit here quietly. I'm going to allow you to explain yourself why you have written so many articles about me and why you believe that I have to be fired because you actually believe, as you've written in past articles, that people like me and Tucker Carlson were anti-Semites. Further to that note, further to me believing that the solution to all of this is simply daylight, daylight being the best of disinfectants, I have publicly offered to Rabbi Barclay, who wants me to watch the IDF footage, that not only will I watch the footage, but I am challenging him to use his contacts to also get me a trip to Israel and Gaza. Allow me to be a reporter on the ground. People feel like they're being propagandized about the matter one way or the other. So why not send somebody who I think, I think I've earned the trust of the American public. I'm not someone that will ever be bought and paid for. I'm not someone that will ever say things that I know to be untrue. Why not allow me to go? I'll talk to IDF shoulders. I'll talk to Netanyahu. But I also want to speak to people that are impacted by this in Gaza. I want to to see what's going on in Gaza. Why not allow someone like me to go there? And I've offered that I will bring other journalists that I think are middle of the line, not one way or the other, simply reporting on the matters and similarly having to endure a bunch of threats and a bunch of smears. People like my friend, who's just a commentator, Dave Smith, a Jewish person who is now being told that he's a self-hating Jew because he won't get in line and, I don't know, (laughs) deliver the APAC talking points. People have a right to know what is going on, especially when it is so significant that you're willing to take out people for not saying the right thing. So my offer stands. Anybody who wants to write an article or smear me or libel me, you are invited to this show. Hopefully, they'll take up my offer. Hopefully, in a few weeks, I will be out to Israel and I will be out to Gaza and I will be able to report to you guys what it is that I actually see. But I also want to say this because it's so important. I am team God, okay? I'm team God. I do not fear the media. I do not fear journalists. I do not fear APAC. I don't fear big pharma. What I actually fear is God. I think that one day we are all going to have to account for the things that we have done and the things that we have said, and I want to make sure that I am not a person that is parroting lies. The fear of losing your job, encouraging some people to spit out lies, I don't think that works in the end, right? I think you, you've got to check your priorities. And so with that said, I want to thank everybody who has been on this journey with me, people that have supported me. I especially want to thank all of the Jewish people that have been in the comments saying how outraged they are. And I know that it is especially difficult for you guys right now because you are being smeared, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm not going to go away. I'm going to use my God-given voice to talk about the things that are important for me. I'm just asking to be left alone, or at least just report the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for today. But don't worry, because we will see you tomorrow for a brand new episode.